friends. I hope that you are having a wonderful day today. My name is Luciano and I make videos about gem chains on the internet as well as talk about anything else I feel like talking about at any given time. But today's video is going to be a jump chain video. We are going to be talking about one of my jumps, the generic liminal space jump. Uh, for those of you who are brand new to jump chains, jump chains are a subtype of choose your own adventure in which a player character known as a jumper spends a period of time in a setting before going to another period of time. And e during each of the stints that they are in a setting, they are getting new powers, they're getting new items, they're making new friends, uh, making new memories, gaining new skills, and they get to take all of that most of the time at least, with them moving forward into their next setting, and it all just snowballs over time. Uh, this is one of my favorite types of choose your own adventures. I am a very active content creator for this community, creating both videos and jump documents, which are sets of documents that outline what a jumper can get in a setting, whether it is items or abilities or the sorts of challenges that they can face. I have made over 50 in total. I believe the number is at 51 to 54. It's somewhere in there. I've also made a few supplements and I am just an extremely active content creator in this community. I'm so excited to get to know you if you are new and you are interested in this space. And I'm also so excited to get to know you if you are someone who is just meeting me for the first time. Let's talk about it down in the comment section below. So this is one of my jumps. This is a generic, which means that it is not keyed to a specific setting. You can take this jump and while there are rules, uh, assuming you take this jump in isolation about where you would go and the sort of stuff that you would get up to, you do not have to take it in isolation. You can take it and you can go to a different setting if you want. You could do that with all of my jumps really, but it's especially true for my generics. This jump is about liminal spaces. There are two different understandings of the term liminal space. Aesthetically, a liminal space is a place that is empty or abandoned. It will appear eerie, forlorn, and often surreal. In this understanding of liminal spaces, empty malls, closed diners, and schools at night are all liminal spaces. A broader, older understanding of the term liminal space is that it is the space between spaces. The boundaries between two points in time or space or both, they're spaces that embody the journey rather than the destination. Hallways, airports, and highways are all liminal spaces in this understanding of the term. In this jump, liminal spaces are the focus, but what you actually do and what you can do largely depends on the origin and the perks and items that you choose. So if this is your first time ever seeing this, just just take notes. If this is your first time ever seeing a jump document, I mean, just take note of this section right here. This is your budget. 1000 may sound like a lot, but things are usually priced in terms of the 100s, so it is not quite as much as it seems, but later on we'll see ways to get new points if you are willing to make your time here a little bit different, a little bit riskier, so to speak. So, your starting location. Um, the way that I tend to do starting locations is very idiosyncratic of me. I do not like rolling for starting locations. I will often have there be one starting location or have your origin determine your starting location, or in some cases even just let you pick your starting location freely. In this case, your origin is what determines your starting location. If you are a liminal space appreciator, you start off on a mundane, regular echo of Earth, the world that jumpers will by default come from since jump chains are built around the assumption that the jumper is a self-insert of the actual person going through and filling out the Choose Your Own Adventures, but it is super easy to create original people or even take a existing characters and send them on jump chains. So this is Earth. It's a regular Earth that you, the human watching this video, are from, uh, or at least it's an echo of that world with all of the regular stuff and no supernatural stuff in it. 
Uh, liminal space creators start off on the set of a liminal space. This is a place that is staged in a way to give off liminal vibes. It could be a diner at night long after everyone else has left. It could be an empty hallway of a university or a school, that kind of thing. It's just a place that has been staged to look like a liminal space and to be just just bait for liminal space creators. Uh, liminal space explorers start off in an actual liminal space. This is uh, more the conceptual version of a liminal space. It is not just any place that is empty and abandoned or any place that is the transition between two different places. It is an actual conceptual location. Um, liminal space explorers, are, this is the more supernatural origin of the origins here, so just keep that in mind. Uh, your age and gender, you can freely determine both your age and gender for the purpose of your time in the setting. Not every jump has that. Many older jumps will have it so that you roll a dice and then maybe you add a few years for the sake of your age. Uh, or you roll a dice for the sake of determining your gender. Although usually the way that that works is your gender defaults to whatever the last gender you were in your last jump happened to be. Uh, people say gender. Oftentimes what they mean is sex. I don't really care. Uh, in most of my jumps, your gender and your age are just not super important. So I tend to let people freely pick them when they come to my jumps, but that's not always the case. Although that sort of philosophy is becoming very common in, among newer jump documents, which is the term for this type of thing that you're looking at right now. Origins. There are three origins in this particular jump. All of them are free. Liminal space appreciators are people who are just fans of liminal spaces. Uh, it's people who will just look at liminal space compilation videos on YouTube, are people who will daydream about liminal spaces. Liminal space creators are people who actually create uh, liminal spaces. And what I mean by this is those are the people who create compilations on the internet. They take and edit photos and videos so that way something has liminal space vibes. And then liminal space explorer, as I previously mentioned, is the more supernatural origin. This makes it so that you can find and explore actual real world liminal spaces and you have a physiology meant for enduring solitude and that kind of thing. All of these perk, all of these origins have perk trees and item trees that are unique to them. All of them have the same number of perks and items, um, and all of them get their 100 perk. There are 100 liminal point perks and items for free, with the rest being discounted by 50%. So we'll we'll take a look at that in a second. There is also a undiscounted perk in this particular jump. It is only one and it is free. It is definitions. You understand the definitions are context sensitive and are akin to living things that grow and mutate over time. You know that what a word means in this reality or even this decade may not be what it means in the future or in another setting. You can also educate people on what different words mean in different realities and they'll accept this and learn from it and you are fantastic at accepting and internalizing these new definitions. Liminal space appreciators have four perks. Everyone here has four perks for their perk trees. The first one, which is free for them, is calming, which makes it so that by engaging in a passive activity that you enjoy, you can enter a meditative state wherein you would gain all the benefits you would from meditating. This is a simple freebie, but it has the potential to be really strong if your jumper has been to a bunch of settings or goes to a bunch of settings where meditation is a handy and powerful thing in future jumps. Um, so moving forward, the next perk in this origin is why though. You have an intuitive understanding of why you like the things that you like and you can eloquently explain why you like them. This may not make others feel the same way that you do, so if you really like something, this may not make them really like it, but they'll at least understand why you like it. Community makes you quite good at finding others who share your interests. You can find or even build communities of people who happen to enjoy the same thing. And restorative, which is the capstone perk, that is a term that means that it is the most expensive perk in a given perk tree. 
um, makes it so that the things that you love, enjoy, and appreciate are actually appreciatively restorative to you. When you do the things that you love or otherwise sit down and appreciate something that truly fulfills you, your rate of healing is improved. This is especially pronounced on a mental level, but even your rate of physical healing is notably improved. Um, this is just what this one perk tree looks like. As you can see, this is meant to be a fairly safe setting. Um, many of my jumps are designed in ways that you could totally endure them as first jumps, which is when a jumper will be at their weakest, short of them going to a gauntlet or taking a power lockout drawback, and they will get stuff that is useful and valuable to them in the future. The liminal space creator origin starts off with staging, which makes you exceptional at setting a vibe. You know how to stage things to match a picture in your mind's eye with ease. The next perk is creation, which makes you good at doing what it takes to capture and create liminal spaces. This means you are great at taking photos and doing video editing, and you can even outright create digital liminal spaces using something like Blender or Photoshop, for example. You could, with just a little bit of effort, make a respectable living as a photographer and video editor. This is a little bit more useful of a perk uh, than some of the other perks here have been. This is something that enables your ability to, this is something that enhances your ability to survive in a variety of other settings. Marketing makes it so that you have the skills and luck needed to successfully market things well. Stone perk for this origin is transporter. Uh, which makes it so that the things that you create are real to an extent. You can temporarily send people to liminal spaces you create. They'll be in the space for a few minutes as far as real lifetime goes, but they'll experience it for as long as they wish. And they'll experience no pain, no harm, or discomfort while in the liminal space. You can send people into the images you create or videos you make. And while at first this is only true for liminal images and videos, with time and training, you can figure out how to send people into other images and videos that you create. So this is one of the first truly supernatural perks here. All of the capstone perks are supernatural to at least some extent, um, but this is one of the most blatantly supernatural ones. It's one that I really like. It was the impetus of the uh, liminal space creator origin which was actually the first origin that i came up with when i was making this gem doc at least as far as sketching it out in my head goes the final origins perks begin with one jumper which makes it so that you are not negatively affected by being by yourself which is something that is very handy for many different types of jumpers. There are a number of jumpers who will eventually go into settings where they are by themselves, at least by default, and it will take them many days, weeks, or even months to find other people, and certainly to befriend and work with other people. Uh, one big example of this that comes to mind is Minecraft, where jumpers can spend even entire years without encountering other people if they have bad enough luck, or if they went and overstack themselves with drawbacks. So that's certainly something that could be quite handy. Liminal Lore uh, is the next perk. This makes it so that you are able to naturally come across liminal spaces in real life. You have a natural radar that points you towards such locations, which is unerring and perpetually updates, so you always know where to go to find both mundane and naturally occurring liminal spaces and portals or pathways to less mundane ones, ones that are a little bit more back rooms and a little bit less float video compilations. Uh, liminal physiology makes it so that when you're in a liminal space, even a natural and real one, you're immune to things like hunger and thirst and you don't need sleep. This is an exceptional ability. It is something that even in the real world can be incredibly handy if you are doing something like being a long distance truck driver. Um, because that would work to include the highway definition of liminal space or, or high, highways as liminal spaces. The final capstone perk for this jump is the journey. It lets you utilize liminal spaces as passages or steps in a journey. You can transport yourself into a liminal version of your surroundings, which will be a little bit taxing, but when you do, you'll be able to continue your journey unobstructed by things like foes or traffics. Uh, or traffic. This can be used to do things like drive down a busy stretch of highway or dart through a crowded mall. 
this is a very fun ability. I definitely think that a lot of jumpers could have uh, fun with this. I think that this is especially good for a jumper who is getting ready to do something like go to Fallout or go to one of the Elder Scrolls games and just does not want to have random encounters with foes uh, or with like dangerous wild animals. This is a very handy way to do something like that and it's probably the most useful perk in this jump for most jumpers who will eventually go to like adventure settings. Moving forward, there is the item section. Each one of the origins here has its own item tree. And just like in the perk tree, you get discounts on the prices that you would pay for something in your chosen origin. So for example, the liminal space appreciators get liminal albums for free and they get the favorite liminal space at a discounted rate that would only cost 200 instead of 400. So the liminal space appreciator has the liminal albums item for free, which is a weekly delivery that drops off albums filled with photos of liminal spaces in your warehouse, or if this is your first jump, just to wherever you're living. From here, this, you can get a club, which is a club of liminal space enjoyers that recognizes you as a full member. At the start of every jump, this club will expand a little bit, and it's filled with generic people who just like liminality in both of its definitions and who also like you. Every week, this club will have a small get-together wherein members share liminal art, photography, and videos, and where the club itself purchases a fun meal, such as burgers for everybody or pizza. Favorite liminal space is a single liminal space that is now located in your warehouse or in some other space you can access if this is your first jump or you otherwise don't have an equivalent of the jump chain warehouse. It's your favorite liminal space, uh, or if you are new to this hobby and aesthetic, then it is one that is perfectly tailored to you. For some, this would be the underground Las Vegas butler, while, uh, uh, while others, I said butler, bunker, while others might get an empty chow garden. Regardless of what sort of liminal space you get, it will be empty of all plant, it will be empty of all non-plant life. This is a correction that I am making. Um, it is something that someone asked me over on, I think it's Space Battles. It was a very good question. I meant to say it will be empty of like all sapient mobile life. You will be the only person or animal there, but you might see plants, that kind of thing. While in this place, powers that passively heal you or restore you are enhanced and your physiological needs are met, which means that you can forego eating by spending time in this space. Um, now, how you are able to game that really depends on the specifics of your build, but it's certainly something that you can cheese. Liminal space creators get capture and creation for free. It is a full suite of technology that you need to capture and create liminal spaces, like a laptop that's outfitted with standard fiat backing and a suite of programs for image, video, uh, for image and video editing and creation. It also includes photography equipment. Um, the archive is a perfect archive of all of the liminal space media you've created. You will never need to worry about losing something you've created, and you can sell infinite copies of what this archive stores as its contents will always immediately replenish. So if you are a liminal space photographer and you sell photos that you create, you can sell an infinite number of those photos just by reaching into this archive and withdrawing copies. Liminal Space Finder is a device that lets you find liminal spaces. It's a radar that can be set to look for places that fulfill certain criteria. And when keyed to those places, uh, and when keyed to places you actually reach, lets you instantly travel back and forth between them and properties that you own. This way you can more easily and organically capture such images. Basically, this is a combination of a radar and a teleportation device. Very handy, uh, although it's pretty difficult to cheese because it's meant to be for liminal spaces, but I'm sure a creative jumper can find a way to cheese the heck out of it. Liminal Space Explorers get Explorer's Clothes, which is an outfit that you can don at any time that's well suited for exploring and travel. Peaceful Liminal Dreams is actually a reference to a choose your own adventure that I made, which was not a jump chain choose your own adventure, but rather just a normal choose your own adventure. I've made a video about it in the past. Um, and you can share this with others, letting them get their own peaceful liminal dreamscape. 
Liminal Teleporter is a device that's usable once a month and sends someone to a liminal space that is a dark reflection of the place they were in when it was used. This is more substantial than Liminal Space Creator, um, even though that does something vaguely similar, because this sends someone to a real liminal space from which a normal person cannot escape. A regular person will invariably perish in this space, although how long it actually takes them to perish depends on the specifics of the liminal space that they were sent to, as well as the specifics of their own physiological nature, their own health, and all of that kind of stuff. So, companions, this is the section for companions. A companion is a special person that you can bring along your chain. You can import them into future jumps by paying a small amount, which will give them a budget of their own, as well as the ability to select an origin, get all the benefits, whether it's freebies, on discounts, perks, and items from that origin, and they can purchase stuff from other origins as well. They just won't get the discounts. You can also uh, find someone who you can convince to join you along your chain, and if you pay a small number of points, 50 points specifically, they will gain the ability to follow you if you persuade them to come with you willingly. So you can't use like supernatural means, you can't supernaturally charm or mind control someone into joining you on your chain, but you can talk to them. And if you talk to them about what a chain is and what it would mean to follow you, and they say, hey, that's cool, and you've paid the uh, points, they become new companions of yours. After this, there is drawbacks. Drawbacks are challenges that someone can steep onto their jump, which would make the jump a little bit more challenging, a little bit more dangerous, a little bit less fun for most people, most of the time anyway. And an exchange would give you more points to buy things with. This right here, you can see a typo, but I have the philosophy that people should always be able to cheese your typos if you don't, uh, if you aren't smart enough to fix them yourself. Um, and this is a philosophy that is universal across all of my jumps. So the actual purpose of this drawback and the actual way this drawback should work, which is pretty standard across my extended stay drawbacks, is you can take it up to three times four points and then after that you can continue to take it to further extend your stay in a setting. <clears throat> So this means you could take it five times to go from being here for 10 years to being here for 60 years, and in exchange, you would get 300 total points to use elsewhere in the documents. Um, I did not cap that here. For some reason, I must have simply forgotten to do so. That happens from time to time. So that means you could take it as many times as you want for points for however many points you want. And if you want to use that to buy every single thing here, you totally can. I don't know how many times that would, I don't know how many times you'd have to do that, assuming you have one origin. It is possible to find perks that let you have more than one origin, although usually those perks have like finicky conditions for them. Um, after that, we have other drawbacks. Um, many of these drawbacks don't make things more dangerous, but once you get to the 400 tier, yeah, stuff actually starts to become more dangerous. Um, this makes it so that liminal spaces become real even for normal people, and it makes it so that liminal spaces are a lot bigger. If a normal person got stuck in a liminal space in this setting, I feel like without any extra drawbacks, the rule would be if they can find the exit, they could leave. Um, but that only works some of the time and with almost endless, that becomes a lot harder to do. Um, not all of these drawbacks make things more dangerous, but they definitely make time here a little bit less pleasant. And there's a number of different philosophies on drawbacks, but in a setting as mundane as this, I did want the drawbacks to focus on making things not necessarily worse, but I did want them to be like negative, uh, although I also tried to make them interesting. I tried to find a healthy middle ground between those two philosophies. I don't know if I did quite as well as I could have, 
But here is the final section for this particular jump dock, and it is the decision section. So each jump is divvied up into three phases, or at least this is the easiest way I have for visualizing how a jump would work in real life. There is the build phase, which is when you are going through and making your choices here on this particular jump dock. There is the active phase when you are actually in the setting, you are in danger, you can encounter people from the setting, you can do stuff in the setting, and then there is the decisions phase, which is when you have to decide what you do next. If you go to the next jump, you continue your chain. This is what most people in a jump chain are going to be doing most of the time. You could stay and enjoy your current life, which makes this your permanent world. You do get to keep all of your jump chain stuff unless something has some sort of specific clause where it wouldn't stay with you if you chose the stay option or you could return to your home world. For most jumpers, your home world would be Earth. Although that is not always going to be the case, there are going to be cases wherein your home world is not Earth. There are some types of jumpers who hail from different settings or who are just uh, aliens from whole other worlds, I guess, if you really wanted to do that. But basically, Go Back sends you back home. You keep all of the stuff that you got over the course of your chain, and you get to live out the rest of your life, however that means, in your native world with all of your jump chain stuff. That said, the most important option for most people on a jump chain, especially in a jump like this, that does not offer any sort of like end jump scenario and is not especially high level or dangerous, will be go to the next jump. That said, this has been the generic liminal space jump. I hope you've enjoyed spending time here with me and chatting about this particular jump doc. I hope that you are having a wonderful day and I can't wait to hear from you in the comment section down below. Bye bye everyone.